So this is Little Shop of Physics Live, and today we are going to be talking about energy. And um, my name's Brian, and I'll introduce my compatriots. Hi, I'm Sheila. And over here? Hi, everybody. I'm Maud. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring up my screen here so that I can see what we got going on. Perfect. And I say, my name's Brian, and we're going to talk about energy today. I'm going to start with just a quick demonstration. I've got this little spring toy. And actually, I got this in Slovenia at the market by the river. And we can show a couple different kinds of energy with this. If I take this toy and I pull it down, I'm stretching a spring. And when I stretch a spring, I say I'm putting in potential energy. And when I let it go, that little mouse starts to move. The energy of motion is kinetic energy. And then it goes up higher in the air. And that's a form of potential energy, too. So I go from potential energy in the spring to energy of motion to potential energy of height, and it kind of goes back and forth, and it's just switching energy back and forth between those forms, and it makes this oscillation. But the key thing we're focusing on is we have different forms of energy, and I'm converting them from one form to another. That's the type of thing we're going to be looking at today. Now we have a demonstration I'm going to do with Sheila over here. We have this little spring-powered car. I'm going to take this thing, and I am going to crank it up. And Sheila, it's going to go into a little container with Sheila. So I'm cranking this thing up. And I'm going to put in one, two, three, oh, hang on, three, four cranks. And we're going to put it in the container and see how many times it goes around. Are we ready, Sheila? I am ready. All right, here we go. So four cranks of energy in. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six and a half. Six and a half times around. Six and a half times around. Okay, and hand that thing back. Hand that thing back. Thank you. And now we're going to go ahead and put in eight cranks. So I put more energy in the system, and if I put more energy in the system, I'm thinking we're going to get more energy out. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and a half. Fourteen and a half, so about twice as much energy in, and we get about twice as much energy out as what it looks like, and that makes sense. And that shows this idea of the conservation of energy. So energy is conserved, and if I put more energy in, I can get more energy out. And we're converting it from different forms. I put energy in a spring, and it turned into the kinetic energy of the motion. And Maude is going to show us something having to do with chemical energy. She's got two containers with water in it. And Maude, what's the difference between those two containers? Alrighty, in this container here on my left, I've got ice cold water. And on the right here, I have really warm water. So I've got these two glow sticks here. I'm going to crack each of them. Oh, and then you're going to crack each of them, so they're going to make some light. And that's chemical energy turned into light energy, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And then... You're going to take those glow sticks and put them in the water? Yep. And I'm going to ask people which glow stick they think will be brighter, the one in the hot water or the cold water. So we're sending out a poll. Let's see what folks think. Oh, that is pretty bright already. Ooh, man, we are evenly split between hot and cold. Oh, hang on a second. Nope, we've had a surge. We've had a surge for the hot. They're both pretty darn bright right now. And I think we've got two-thirds of the people are saying the glow stick in the hot water is going to be brighter. I say we end this poll, and let's try it. All righty. Cold and hot. Oh, they float. Oh, and they're floaty, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> and are we seeing a difference? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to see. And Maude, go ahead and show us again which one is the cold and which one's the hot. Cold, hot. That hot one is definitely getting brighter. Yeah. But now, oh my gosh, that is way that's, brighter. Yeah, that's going for it. <laughs> Took a second, but now we're so here. So there's a certain amount of energy in the glow stick. Oh, and yeah. when we put it in the hot water, I think it's just coming out faster. We're taking out the energy at a greater rate. So Maude, tell me what you think is going to happen over time. Like right now, the one in the hot water is brighter. What's going to happen after a while, do you think? Well, if, it's, if, uh, if we think about the hot water cooling down, then that's losing energy and it might turn into a little bit of the cold water. So I think it will probably, over time, it'll start looking a little bit more like this one. Well, I'm thinking too, if that glow stick in the hot water has only got so much energy and it's using it up at a greater rate, I think it's going to burn out. I think 
I think that hot one is going to get dimmer if we watch it for a while. So I'm going to say, like, let's keep checking on those glow sticks. Mm -hmm. I think when we check back, the one in the cold water is going to is going to be out in front after a while. But boy, right now we're making the energy come out at a greater rate. And now we're over to Sheila. And we're going to do another energy input output thing. And these are two little cars. Sheila, tell us how you put these together. All right. These are called tumble buggies. And um, they're normally run um, on a battery power. But we've done something special with them today. But I want you to notice they have gummy bear passengers. And nice. they all have seat belts on. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> I want to show you that this is where the battery goes. But as I said, we're not using that. We hooked up a wire to this motor and a wire to this motor. And so we're going to see what happens. We just connected those two motors together? Yes. Awesome. So what happens when you push All one car? Did. Okay. So I'm going to um, push this car. And notice how, did anyone notice that this one moved a little bit? I'll pull this one back. And that one came back with me too. All right. I'll try this one. You can see the other one moving forward. Whoa. Whoop. And then I'm going to have it back up as well. And the gummy bears are still safe. Nice. Um, so what's happening is, as I push this, it's changing um, into electrical energy from the kinetic. That's right. So there's a motor in the car, and it turns out motors are work just like generators. So they you're going to push that. Usually we put in electricity, it makes the car go forward, but you're making the car go forward, and that makes electricity. And we use that electricity to run the second car, is that right? Yes. So this one's using its motor. This one's a generator, the motor. <laughs> awesome. So. Yeah. But what, what I'm noticing is... You're just hooking those two cars together, there's no battery. So the energy you put into the first car goes into the second car through that wire. But the second car is not moving as far. It is not. It turns out that there's other changes in the energy as I am pushing the, pushing the car so that um, there's probably a little bit of thermal energy in there that it's changed to. Awesome. Awesome. And somebody has suggested that you should eat one of the bears. And I think we have to win. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. I'm taking know. the driver over here. And so some of the energy, <laughs> <laughs> some of the energy that, that, that Sheila puts into that car goes into the other car and makes it move. So she's using one of them as a generator, one of them as a motor. She puts in energy in one car, it goes into the second car, but you don't get 100%. And the energy gets lost along the way. And of course, it's not really lost because you can't destroy energy, but it turns into a different form. I'm going to show you an example of this. And it turns out gummy bears are not bouncy. If I hit a gummy bear with a hammer, the hammer stops. And if I hit a gummy bear repeatedly with a hammer, the kinetic energy of the hammer turns into thermal energy of the gummy bear. So I'm just going to take this thing and pound on it. And as I pound on it, Look at the bear warm up. Oh my gosh, that is a smoking hot gummy bear right there. It is getting toasty. Check it out. Check out the bear next to my fingers. Cold fingertips, hot gummy bear. Wow, that is a smoking hot gummy bear right there. And it's hot because I have put energy into it. I lost kinetic energy of the hammer. I picked up thermal energy of the gummy bear and actually feeling it. That is, wow, it left a warm spot on the table. That is awesome. And I just heated it by hitting it with a hammer. Awesome. I think awesome. it's a dangerous place for gummy bears today. <laughs> I'm thinking Thanksgiving is coming. I'm thinking turkey. I'm thinking big hammer. I'm just saying, you'll tenderize it and you'll heat it up. <laughs> Next thing we want to do is we want to look at a, a way of storing potential energy. I think we all, have, we all have rubber bands here. And when you stretch a rubber band, you store potential energy in it. It's like I've stretched that thing and I've stored some energy. And we're all going to make some little projectiles. And this is something you all can try. I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to fold it repeatedly like so. I'm going to bend it over like this take my rubber band and put it between my thumb and my finger and then I can take this thing 
and I can I can launch it. And since Patrick's not here, I'm going to launch it at the camera. So here we go. If I launch this right at the camera, here we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the potential energy stored in the elastic band turned into kinetic energy of motion of that piece of paper. And I think it's time for a little battle between oh, the three yeah, of us. I think so too. We're on opposite sides of the screens. I see Maude is ready. Sheila is ready. Brian is ready. I'm going to fire one at Maude here. Oh, Maude, are you trying to go over the top? I'm what? <laughs> Can you do it? Oh, oh over the top. Yeah. Over the top. It's closer to Sheila than anybody else. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. My rubber band broke. Too much energy. I tried to store a little bit too much energy I in know. it. Uh oh. And when it, oh, there we go. And the shields between us not only protect us Whoa, from exposing. Oh, you're lucky that shield was there. From exposing each other <laughs> <laughs> to any nasty bugs we might be carrying. It also protects us from being able to shoot little projectiles at each other. All right, Maud. Oh, oh, and the shield protect me, protects me. Now, we did this on a bigger scale. We got a whole bunch of latex tubing, and the latex tubing is rubber tubing. And if you stretch it, it works just like a giant rubber band. And um, we have a little video that shows, oh yes, here we are launching our mascot Barrington into the air. Oh my gosh, poor little Barrington. You got this, buddy. And Barrington is, oh, oh, oh. And that is another launch of Barrington right at the camera. And one more. <laughs> and here, it, oh. This one is looking solid. There goes Barrington. We finally got a good launch. And Barrington went quite a distance that time. Barrington kind of like went right over the head of the person filming and ends up covering quite a great distance. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a giant rubber band and a giant bear making a little bit of a slingshot. Oh yeah, there he goes. There he goes. There goes Barrington. Off to the stratosphere. Awesome, awesome. And now we're going to show you some other things that work that way. And Sheila's got things called rocket balloons. And when you pump up a balloon, you put energy into the rubber because you're stretching the rubber. So Sheila, right. show us what you got. I have um, an orange rocket balloon here and a pump because I didn't want to blow it up in front of you. <laughs> and it would take a while. So I'll put some air in it. And as I'm putting the air in, it's stretching the, the plastic of the balloon. Or is it rubber? It's rubber. It's the rubber. Mm -hmm. um, out. And now I said I've got some stored potential energy. So I do have stored potential energy. And I'm going to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns into some kinetic energy and some sound energy. Oh, awesome. Nice energy good. transformation. But wait a minute. Maude is setting up for something. She's also got a balloon. But instead of having one filled up with air, it looks like it's filled up with with water. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> All right, so I'm just protecting as many surfaces as I can. And here I've got two balloons filled with water. And these are just balloons that you would normally make uh, balloon animals with, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And so I'm just going to hold them by the top. And they've all got this little tail. And so there's a lot of stored potential energy. And so stretching the rubber stored a lot of potential energy. And when we snip off that tail, that potential energy is going to turn into, let's see, losing potential energy in the balloon and go for it, mod. <laughs> oh, dear gosh. Whoops. Can you get a better snip? There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh, and it's turning into kinetic energy of squirting water, and that thing is going around. I think we need to see that one more time, Mod. Let's do the green one. All righty. All right, so we took a water, uh, balloon animal balloon, filled it up with water, a lot of stored potential energy, and we're going to cut the tip. Oh, yeah, and there we go. A lot of kinetic energy, got some fast moving water. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I got a lot of kinetic sure energy of moving water right there. Oh my gosh. And good thing the screen was there. It's a little bit drippy. It's that splash protection it's a, now. Yeah, it's splash protection too. Awesome. And it looks like, uh-oh, it looks like Patrick got a little bit on his camera. Fortunately, we have spare cameras. And we went outside and did this bigger with a piece of latex tubing. Oh yeah. So we tried a big piece of latex tubing and then this thing was pretty ejecting water, pretty furious clip. 
And then we tried it with a, even a lot, oh my gosh, yes, yes, there we go. Lots of kinetic energy in that water from the stored potential energy in the stretched tubing. That is awesome. That is awesome. That thing went pretty far up in the sky. And then we had a smaller tube. And with the smaller tube, we're getting like amazing, oh, and then it started flipping and flopping. And this kind of did not endear me to my compatriots in the Little Shop of Physics because we all ended up getting a lot more wet than we had anticipated. A lot of kinetic energy coming out in the stream, potential energy stored in the stretched latex turned into kinetic energy of water that was whipping and flying and pretty much going everywhere, just like the balloon. Started strong, but as soon as I let go, it started going a little wonky. Oh yeah. And now we're going to do some more things with balloons filled with water. Oh my gosh, look at that thing go. And then we're going to move on to, to Sheila, who's got some water balloons right there, it looks like. I do. Sheila, take a water balloon, and if you lift it up, can Oops, you bounce a water balloon? Here. All right. So I'll lift it up, and I'm going to drop it, because I'm raising it up, so I'm giving it Gravitational potential, potential energy. energy. Awesome. All right. Here we go. Oh my gosh, and it bounces. I know, it, isn't that amazing? It bounces because you're storing some of that energy in the stretch of the rubber. Should I try the red oh, one Oh yeah, too? I think we'll try the red okay. one. Okay. Here we go, Again, and the water potential. balloons. They bounce, just like a rubber ball, yeah. which is kind of awesome. So it's got that elastic Oh energy. yeah, it's got that elastic potential energy stored in the balloon, that's fantastic. And of course in Little Shop of Physics, we're not content with a small balloon. Bigger. We got to go bigger. I think we got to go bigger. <laughs> and here we were outside, and Maude had this rather large balloon that she dropped. And check out the stretch on this bad boy. Oh my gosh. And you stored a lot of elastic potential energy. So that thing kept on moving in kind of a very oh, bizarre way. It stretched like crazy and then launches itself back into the air. So water balloons are bouncy. Oh my gosh, that is delightful. That is delightful. <laughs> and next, we're going to go over to, to Maude. And I have a question to ask everybody. And this is another poll we're going to show you. Do you think, do you think that steel is bouncy? Do you think that steel is bouncy? What do folks think about that? If I'm going to bounce not a rubber ball, but a steel ball. Oof. Convincingly, well, no, this is pretty close. This is pretty close. This is a close, close poll here, but no is out in front. People are thinking that steel is not bouncy, mod. Well, I think let's see what let's see what you got. All right, so I've just got big steel plate here, and I've got a little steel ball right there. What I'm gonna do. Same thing as Sheila with the balloon. I'm going to pick up the ball and drop it, so I'm giving it potential energy. And then we'll see if it can keep it. It's still bouncing. It's still going. <laughs> yeah, it'll go for a while. It's still going. And finally, it stopped. Well, we got to see that again. That was, that was too Absolutely. awesome. People are liking that. People are saying, whoa, with lots of O's. Steel on steel is bouncy. Who knew? And then somebody said bounce it on the table. I think we do that. I think we, we, they say bounce on a table. Let's see what happens. So steel on table. Let's see what happens. Still a little bouncy. Bounces yeah. a little bit, but only once or twice before. 
So steel is, and steel on steel is bouncier than steel on table, which is kind of awesome. It's the steel that's bouncy. That is awesome, awesome thing. And Sheila has got a little thing with a, I see you've got a couple of bouncy balls here. I do. This is I, something I people can try themselves. I that they would bounce, but <laughs> um, I have a basketball and a tennis ball, and I'm going to raise it up. so that I can uh, drop both of them at the same time. And I wonder what will happen. I'm giving it potential energy. Oh, no, Sheila. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, <no. laughs> that's, that, oh, wait a, by the way, that's Adam over there. And I'm going to say thanks. Let's go ahead and, yeah, Adam is the guy who Let's, put all the videos hi, together Adam. today. And he was doing this at the last minute. He's also the guy who moderates the chat. Adam is doing amazing work behind the scenes. So it looked like some of the energy from the big ball went into the little ball. It did. What? Should I do it again? No, I think you do good? it again. Okay. And actually, I did this outside at my house, and I shot it over a neighbor's car. Oh, and somebody says do it on the floor. I think they say oh. back up and try it on All the floor. Right, That's yeah. what people are suggesting. That sounds great. I'll have more potential energy, too. More potential energy. What? Let's try it. Whoa. Oh, it hit the ceiling! <laughs> hit the ceiling on that one. Hit the ceiling on that one. That is awesome. That is totally awesome. And of course, in Little Shop of Physics, we're not content doing it that way. We got to go bigger. We tried a bowling ball and a pool ball, and it turns out bowling balls are bouncy and pool balls are bouncy. And if you drop a bowling ball and a pool ball, you get the same sort of a bounce. And that pool ball ended up going quite high in the air. Bowling ball and a pool ball on top. Look at that launch. There goes that pool ball out of sight. As a matter of fact, it's literally out of sight because it landed in the bushes and we completely lost it. And you get that because the energy from the bowling ball was transferred to the pool ball and they're both quite bouncy as it turns out. Now somebody brought up solar energy at the start, the sun's energy, and Maude has got a little thing with solar energy. Maude, tell us what you got. So here I've got a bunch of funny looking grasshoppers and on the grasshopper on the top of it there is a solar cell which makes these little legs go and I've got it on this so you can hear the uh, the sound better and so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna turn on this light whoa they are dancing Very, very awesome. Very, very awesome. And that's using the solar cells, turning light energy into electric energy, making those things dance. And Sheila's got uh, something that makes electric energy as well. Sheila's got, looks like a generator. I do. I have a generator and um, a power cord that's plugged into it. And I'm going to generate some electricity. Let's do it. Hopefully we'll get some light energy. All right, let's see it. Oh yeah. She was generating lots of electricity. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. And then next to you, you've got two different kinds of light bulbs on the same I generator. I do. Um, I have an LED bulb right here, and I have an incandescent bulb. And what I'm going to do is first try the LED bulb, and I've got a crank on a generator. So here we go. Oh, I hardly have to move it at all. Oh my gosh, and you're getting a lot of light. That is very bright. LED light. Now let's battle with the incandescent bulb. Oh, I'm having to turn it harder and faster. Oh my gosh. So the incandescent bulb isn't very good at turning electric energy into light energy. You're no. not getting much at all. Let's see the LED again. Oh, I know. It's just Whoa. great. And it's like I could do it with one finger moving Oh my gosh. Way to... more efficient. And someone's asking, do this fast. Crank it fast. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Fast makes it bright is what I'm seeing. Sunglasses. That is awesome. Now Maude has got a thing over here where she's going to put electric energy in. Oh, what? And she's putting electric energy into water. But, and there's two electrodes for that water. And it looks like bubbles are coming off of one of them. Actually, the bubbles stopped coming off. Oh, yeah. I just turned it off. <laughs> oh, I'd say crank it up. All right. Oh, yeah. Let's turn it on. Here we go. So when Maude puts electricity in here, bubbles are coming off the one electrode. And Maude is putting electric energy into the water. And it's actually, Maud, what's coming off that electrode? So what's coming off of this, so I've just, this is just a little 
a stainless steel screw. So what is coming off of this is actually hydrogen gas and then it is coming all the way up top here and then I have just a little hole at the top and so what I'm going to do is because hydrogen gas is escaping through that hole right now I'm going to put some bubble solution over it oh and my there gosh. you go it's already creating a bubble. That's a bubble full of hydrogen. And hydrogen gas is combustible and so Oops, lost your bubble. Lost my bubble, no. She's back. Alrighty, and then here, I've just got a little lighter. A little sparker. If we put a spark on that bubble, oh. oops, lost the bubble. <laughs> this is probably the trickiest part. This is tricky. So I have a bubble filled with hydrogen, and so electric energy went into the chemical energy of the hydrogen. I've got stored chemical energy, and now we're going to liberate it, and we're going to get, hopefully, a little... I don't know how close I need to get for that one. We're not having luck with the sparker. I'm going to suggest we go over to Sheila and Maude while we're doing that. You go get a, get a match, and let's go yeah. old school. What do you say? Oh, you got matches right there. Okay, we're ready. So Maude is ready. She's going old school with a match. She's going to get a little bit of flame here. Oh, or not. <laughs> oh, well, that's not good. So we need a bubble and we need some flame. So we got hydrogen energy, hydrogen gas stored inside that bubble, stored some chemical energy. And as Maude said, the hydrogen gas is flammable. Nope. Why? And I'm going to say, let's go over to Sheila, Maude, yeah. and while you work on that, and we're going to cut back to you when you get a match lit and you're building up a bubble. And Sheila's got a little mirror, it looks like. I and do. You've got a it's going to look pretty shiny for a moment. This mirror is concave. And what I want to do is use a quarter and I'm going to give it some rotational kinetic energy. Awesome. And it spins and spins and spins and we get a little bit of sound energy right at the end yeah, which is really really cool. That was nice. It's really really cool. Should I do it again or uh, go bigger? I think we should go bigger. We okay. had a video where we went bigger and we said let's not do just a quarter Oh, on a plate, and hopefully we get sound oh, on this, this video is, um, too, because the sound the of this one, one is on kind floor, of awesome. It? Big, big disc, and it turns out the floor is really, really slippery, and the stone on stone is pretty bouncy, and this thing goes on for a long, long time, and we get some amazing sound as it gets towards the end, and so it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and, it goes. and this thing at the end was deafening. Like you wanted to be out of the room when this thing was happening. Got it. <laughs> still going, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going. And that is a big stone disc off of Lazy Susan. And now it is done. And we're over to Maude, who has got a hydrogen bubble on top of that bottle. And we're going to get some flame. And we should hear a little bit of a pop when that thing goes. Oh, <laughs> I saw a little bit of a flame off of that thing. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. So electric energy stored in the chemical energy and the hydrogen. Got a little bit of sound energy, a little bit of light energy. And now for a grand finale behind me, next week we're going to talk about balance. And all these dominoes are balanced on end, and as they're balanced on end, they're storing potential energy. And I think Sheila is going to release the potential energy. It's going to turn the kinetic energy of the moving dominoes. And we have some big, 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 big dominoes. Okay, and we've got bigger ones push. in the shop. All right, okay. let's see what you got. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I don't think we can do anything that tops that. So I think we're going to call that our grand finale. That was some stored energy released in this amazing cascade and brings us to the issue of balance, which is the topic we'll treat on the next episode of Little Shop of Physics Live. We'll see you back next week. Bye. Bye-bye.